This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. King, king Richard. Richard. This is a movie about a king named Richard. Yeah, the and, dick king. And he rules over famously. And he ruled... We didn't see this movie. Fuck. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Oh, you had me there for a second. I was like, there's no way that I woke up at 8 a.m. to watch this movie today, and you did not watch it. I was like, and it's, um, and fuck. Uh, uh, Kirsten Dunst is in this one, yes. I think. She Jesse plays... Plemons, that's where she meets her husband. Yes. I actually was told that uh, Green Knight is mm-hmm. like the best movie of this past year. I believe that didn't come out this year. Maybe I'm oh. wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. But I did download Green Knight to watch on the plane. That's right. And then we didn't sit next when? to each other. It was a whole thing. When did... Uh... All right. So here's the deal with uh, with King Green Richard. Knight. Yes. <laughs> For some reason, I just had like some aversion to it. I, I think maybe uh, the fact that Will Smith hasn't made a good movie in a little little while may have prevented that. Is it weird that like a Will Smith movie comes out and you're like it's probably not necessarily good. <laughs> jumping to see it? Uh, he's up for... Uh, best actor. He's uh, one of six Oscar nominations for this movie. Best picture, best actor, Will Smith. Best supporting actress, uh, Anjanou Ellis. Best original screenplay, best editing, and best original song for Be Alive by Beyonce. Will certainly hit on the original song thing at, at one point. But yeah, Will Smith plays uh, Richard Williams, the father of Venus and Serena Williams as he raises them and pushes for them to get the coaching they need to become tennis stars. It is a distant cousin of Bohemian Rhapsody in that Venus and Serena are producers on the movie. And that, for me at least, was a little distracting as I was watching it. I think the big thing was they are never really realistically portrayed as children. And maybe... That's true to form. Maybe that's accurate. Maybe they were so, like, strictly raised to be perfect human beings that there's never, like, a, they never, like, knock over a vase, you know? <laughs> like, they never – there's never just, like, a kid moment. They're never being assholes. Yeah. And I'm like, they, this is distracting. It's tough to watch a movie about kids where – there's just like never a question of the kids being perfect. Even in and there's like, so many of them too. In yeah, like, in a in a tight quarters uh, in Compton, very small house. They all share. It's like five kids share the one bedroom. Yeah, and they're, and they're just all like happy go lucky all Angels. the time. But I I mean like on one hand I understand what you're saying. On the other hand, like the family dynamic of this movie was one of the strongest points. Definitely, like the 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 charm the of sister. that family and yeah. like how they bonded and stuff. Was uh, was one of the strongest points of the movie. Yeah, Ange- I was a little surprised with the best supporting actress nom for Anjanou Ellis, who plays their mother. But th- she has one scene that's strong enough that you're like, okay, Kitchen this scene? probably gets you. Yeah, this probably gets you uh, a nomination, and, and she got it. But uh, that is absolutely. We've talked about this before. That uh, the um, the one they show. Yes, the uh, I, what do we call that? We gotta have a name for that. Like getting the poster. There has yeah. to have it has to be an equivalent for. Like getting the real, um, not real. Uh, that's uh, we could call it like award bait, or but that's just basically but that sounds like, like making a movie set in California. <laughs> that's true. And, oh, this is set in California. This is just another classic like Oscar bait movie. They <laughs> set it in glamorous California, where like this guy's getting like beat up for wanting his kids to <laughs> right. play tennis. Um, no, I I think the kitchen scene was uh, was one of the, like the strongest scenes of the year, probably. Yeah, I agree with that. And it, uh, like I said, there's some Bohemian Rhapsody to it, where it just kind of like glosses over things, but they acknowledge in the this scene where. Um, that where his wife is telling him off and she's like dude you got so many other kids and i'm like okay cool so they're acknowledging that not that it's like a a, a bad thing obviously but like it, it would be a an unusual detail to leave out yeah, if like they didn't the acknowledge that he uh had a previous marriage and another family and was like devoting all of his time obviously to uh venus and serena being stars uh 
I was told by bigger sports fans and certainly bigger tennis fans than me that um, not all this movie is completely accurate, but it cemented everything that I knew about this family. The one thing is the line at toes between supportive dad and stage parent. And he, uh, Richard Williams obviously was like a big time stage parent. And, but that's actually, that's conveyed in this movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they don't do, uh, like, he doesn't he, like truly cross the line or anything. Uh, in, but in, in real life, it is believed like there's uh I don't know if it's in his memoir or somebody else's, but like he would, um, break beer bottles and sprinkle glass behind the, uh, is it baseline? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So like they wouldn't uh, step out. So they wouldn't step out, or he'd put it in a place so like they wouldn't commit to a ball too fast or whatever. Which, like, minus the broken glass, is a good idea. If you want to like put down some like paint or something, and you're like, ah, you're gonna mess up your shoes if you go over there. Like the the glass obviously borders on uh, abuse, but they do they they shine like a light, yeah, a, a light light on some of this bordered. On abuse. Yeah, and I do think that they do a pretty good job of telling like a uh, a like complicated and complex yeah. story. Yeah, they never present him as perfect. No, definitely not. And uh, you know, you you see, and like it makes sense that that you know Venus and Serena Williams would want to like the overwhelming message to be like he his heart's in a good place. Yeah, and he helped get us where we are. But like obviously there were there he was uh like a hover parent he was mm. like a stage parent whatever you want to call it he was pretty overbearing at times yeah he was more he, you see him and this is where I'll give the movie credit like you see him more as a person who thinks they know what they're doing mm-hmm. or in like is sure they know what they're doing more than someone who actually knows what they're doing obviously everything by and large most of what he does is like incredibly successful like he right. sees his vision through basically he's got a plan to right he's he's got a plan which this movie is essentially uh the the counterpart to red dead redemption in which there is a main character who has a plan just needs a little money okay he um they his motivation is a little i'll say insincerely uh depicted sounds extreme but they make the the movie makes it about like these two girls are going to disrupt tennis like i've got like my two girls they're going to change the world and everything it, it this f- was financially motivated yeah obviously but but that's what oh that's what like pretty much all stage parents are yeah but it, and like it's it's again like i think it's from like a good place or it's presented yeah. from like like it's in a good place or from a good place like they're from compton it's a dangerous area they want to get out yeah it's very very clearly conveyed that like he wants a better life not only for himself definitely for his children yeah and it is uh yeah apparently- but he does pull like the i did this card a lot Oh like, yeah, and and that's sort of like where they kind of hammered home that this guy's not perfect. He's yeah. like taking credit for all of this, and he's like pushing back against like world class coaches. Um, but yeah, apparently he before Venus and Serena were born, he was watching sports and like flipped past the tennis match, and it ended, and they were like, okay, now uh, she just made forty thousand dollars for this, and he was and like before they were born, he was like, okay these kids are playing tennis <laughs> yeah and but it, it i mean it it is wild obviously there's like a huge um racial element to this story where like there's a lot of tokenism and there's a lot of like whoa it's so it, 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 it's, it's so, so incredible whoa like there's the meeting with uh the guy played by i forget his name but he's in dylan Mad mcdermott Men. no uh dylan mcdermott's the other guy yeah okay. but where he's like he just keeps repeat. Does he keep saying incredible? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "It's so incredible what you've done with these yeah, girls." Yeah. He's like, "Why do you? Why do you keep saying I- incredible?" So like they they show the stubbornness there. Um, yeah, it's it's like a it's so again like it's a complicated story, complicated character with layers. I think they do a pretty good job of like explaining why the layers are there and yeah. like peeling them back and uh, like you obviously have um, you know it being 
from Compton. You also have like the general distrust of like people handling his kids and the fact that like his own father left mm. and ran away, which like he kind of seemingly like overcorrected in yeah. a way where he like was uh, like not leaving, but like actually standing in their way a little bit. Uh, do you think the gangster element of the movie was, uh, was accurate little... or inaccurate? Do you think just, I, I I've looked this up. It seem it it seems like plausible, but it also seemed like a bit cartoonish in like the context of the movie. Mostly, that was accurate. So they they would play at tennis courts, and gangsters would just like hover around them, uh, harass their older sister, and beat up uh, Richard. And at one point, Richard was like. He he got a shotgun in the movie. They have a pistol. He's like, "All right, I'm gonna get these guys." And in real life, on his way to, uh, he he was gonna go and like fire a gun to scare them, so they knew he meant business. And as he was driving there, he drove past uh, an ambulance that was like surrounding one of the gangsters' bodies. In this movie, they make it a little more dramatic yeah. where, like, he goes with, like, a handgun. It's, like, very, like, Jesse about to kill those yes, two dudes. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. And then, yeah. like, he changes his mind type of thing. Uh, he doesn't change his mind. Right. Walt <laughs> changes his mind and yes. murders them first. But <laughs> yeah. um, So let's get, glamorize a little bit. Uh, I did find it interesting. So I said that this is, like, Bohemian Rhapsody-esque and that the sisters had a lot of say in what went on in the movie. Uh, after he gets beat up by the, the gangsters, there's a scene, there was a scene in the screenplay where... He was in the hospital. They brought him into the hospital. The classic scene, the wife is running alongside the gurney, like, yell, like, what did they do? What happened? What did they do to my husband? That type of thing. And the sisters were like, our mom would absolutely never do that. They showed it to the mom. She, like, laughed them out of the room because the mom was a nurse. She's like, A, if I'm, like, looking at somebody in a hospital, I generally – will know what happened to them. Right, yeah. I'm a nurse. Yeah, idiots. and I would have more composure to to myself than that. Right, right. Like, context clues. Like, they came from the park. This was a dangerous area. Like, probably got beat up. So, I, I like in, in, in that respect that they, like, hardened it to make it um, accurate. But also, there's, like, some of the things you see in the movie, you're like, okay, this was made by people who are very close to the story. Yeah. Like, Venus loses at the end, and they really lean into, like, because the other person cheated. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, it's good to know that all these years later, like, you are legitimately... I mean, Serena is the greatest tennis player ever, if not the greatest athlete ever. Venus has won Wimbledon five times. Yeah. Still, like, like, stewing over this girl using the bathroom. I really <laughs> liked that. I lo I'm like, so that's why... That's where, like... I will never awesome. be like for a lot of reasons. Like I will just never be able to access the mindset of like a Tom Brady or yeah. a Venus or Serena Williams because like all these years later, like all these years later, Tom Brady's still a crybaby about going in the sixth round. I love that like the cult, the like apex of this movie, the um, the 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 climax of this movie is. I, w I s would have won if that little brat <laughs> didn't cheat. Like, this was, a, like, 35 years ago. And she, like, she may have had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, shout out uh, this movie taking some real creative liberties. You want to talk about innovative stuff. Uh, how about a sports movie tossing John Bernthal in a supporting role? How about, yeah, just how thinking out of the box. Man, just looking at that uh, at that Ford versus Ferrari template. I thought of you when his character was introduced because you often bring up the, like, John Bernthal is in, like, a quarter of every movie. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this is just, like, a perfect example. <laughs> and it's perfect use of him, too. Yeah, he was great in this. Uh, the acting was was pretty phenomenal all around in this I movie. I got to say, like, I, I, I've, I've kind of been swept away with the, is this accurate? Is this, like, uh, I'm a little shell-shocked by, like, anything that does the Bohemian Rhapsody thing. But I liked this movie. I liked it way more than I thought I would. Yeah, it's got the six best uh, betting odds for Best Picture it's not going to win. Not going to win, but like I'm glad that it was nominated. Yeah, I I'm think that it was definitely cool. With this nomination, a very, uh, a very good telling of the story. The acting was outstanding. I thought Will Smith was awesome. Yeah. Um, and 
it's uh I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a sports movie. Um I, I think like the tennis scenes are awesome. The tennis Pete's scenes just are great. A real sports hardo. That's right. I don't. I don't. Tennis is not tennis. a sport. <laughs> it's just run around. <laughs> no, I was. I'm not saying because of anything to do with tennis. I, I think it's just more of like a family movie, honestly. Uh, and it's. Uh, I care more about sports than family. That's, that's right. Family. Me, some things are bigger than sports, as, that's right. as some people say. Um, I think that. Uh, I think that it. It's not a sports movie, but they do sports very well. Like the the tennis scenes are. Oh my awesome. god! Right, there is a scene where it's in the the match at the end with Venus. Like those mm-hmm. first few sets, I was like, man, I know that like I'm not. This is all like choreographed and everything, but I was like, she was a fucking machine. Yeah, it. They like for so, somehow some way they made it look. Like this was like actual competitive tennis, but also shot incredibly well. Like there yeah. are a few like return shots that are fired directly at the camera. I don't know if this was like filmed in 3D, but that <laughs> was seemed like it would be a 3D bait scene. I like that they that they leaned into or they made like absolutely no lie about that. Like Venus was the star. Mm-hmm. Ven- like everybody was like all hyped on. V- I remember when they came up, everyone was like Venus and Serena Williams. Like v- I. Venus is a little better, but like they're both supposed to be really good. And I mean, really, it just goes to like kids sports. They probably just took a look at them and was like, Venus is taller. Yeah. <laughs> Venus is better. And Serena is like the fucking greatest to ever do. It. Of course, they had to sneak in a little uh, Andy Roddick reference, too. I did get yes, that. I did get all, that. They were like, here's John Roddick. His brother, Andy, yeah. wink, wink, breaking the fourth wall is uh, is going to be better. So we uh, talked about the the tennis coach character played by John Bernthal. We did not talk about who gets the and in this movie, and that would be Tony Goldwyn. Mm-hmm. You may know him from the Belko experiment and the the, the video introducing yes. Joe Biden thing, introducing uh, the the uh, new radicals, the new at, radicals Joe at Joe Biden's inauguration, digital inauguration. Yeah, he hosted the digital thing famously. <laughs> so weird. It was like, hey, everybody, as you know, I play a president, but and we we're like, that guy plays a president. What is, is he? The president of Belco Industries. I looked it up by the way. I think it's uh, the show Scandal. Okay, on which he played All a right. president, but he got the and. So here's why, uh, or here's here's maybe why. Here's why. Yeah, facts. Pete's gonna break it down. Uh, he wasn't supposed to. Reg- he wasn't ha- uh, supposed to get that role. He was a last second substitute. Who was supposed to get it? Leave Schreiber. Oh, Leave Schreiber would have been awesome in that role. But he would have been. I like Goldman. I, I, I thought the Goldman yeah, no, he was, really was he was very good too. Uh, no disrespect, but I feel like they may have made like the and famously uh, we don't disrespect Tony Goldman. That's right. Uh, I feel like they may have made like the and title card before, like in preparation of Leave Schreiber, yeah. and they were like, ah, oh, well, we'll just leave it for this guy. Was they did they there do a double and ends. on this? Yeah, Berthold got ends. one as well. Yeah, that's good. I thought but both I th- coaches were good. I feel like Bernthal's uh, standard agreement for taking any movie is that he gets the and. That's fair, but like he's like a he's a true and. He's like when oh, people talk about yes. like most valuable player, you're like, well, if you do it in terms of like who's most valuable, it's this person, but that's not really what it means. Yeah. If you really do like a here are the people in the movie and this person's also in it. Yeah. In the the truest sense, in the literal definition, Bernthal is a classic and. Bernthal is the human embodiment of getting the and. We should call him uh, Bernthand or something. Ooh, or I like Bern, that. Like, or th- we should talk. We should make like a graphic that's like Bernthal, and there's like an ampersand at some point <laughs> in it. He's like the truest uh, and. I do want to talk about best original song, uh, "Be uh, Be Alive" by Beyonce. I had not heard it until the end credits of this movie. It is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. It must win best original song. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go against what I hate and say I haven't heard all the original songs. But this Beyonce one is amazing, and it got me thinking. If she wins this, how close is she to EGOT status? Ooh, good and call. Uh, the answer: How close do you think she is to EGOT status? Now, keep in mind that uh, she had a Netflix special called Homecoming. Okay. A film by uh, Beyonce that was – that got six Emmy nominations. Uh, is she three quarters of the way there? She is one quarter of the way okay. there because famously award shows just treat Beyonce like shit. The Grammys – she has the most Grammys by like a, a individual artist, but – 
no majors, really. They don't give her album of the year. They don't give her song of the year, record of the year, which if you've heard this podcast before, you've heard me rant about many a time. It is, it, it's very unfair what the Grammys does to Beyonce. They're like, see, we give you awards. But I'm like, they give her awards, but they don't give her her flowers, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, she did not win a single Emmy for Homecoming. It got six nominations, lost on all of them, which I was like, well, that's just classic award show treatment of Beyonce. This is her first Oscar nomination. She has not been nominated or won a Tony. So if she wins this, she will be halfway there to an EGOT. But yeah, there, there needs to be like an investigation on the unfairness to Beyonce. Uh, if if Bon Iver's second nature were to be nominated for Don't Look Up, would you have still preferred uh, this song? It would have been like a licorice pizza uh, coda for me where I'm like, hey, if either of these win, I'll be really happy. Uh, but this is a good movie. It is a little long, but I hate to do the it's long thing, but it, it is it, a bit long. It, it, it is a bit long, uh, but I strong recommend. I recommend you watch all these movies. Yeah, but I would say that this one is uh, is very good. I'd say very good. I th- I'd say it's very good. If someone says, hey, I'm, th- I'm going to watch it on a plane or I'm going to watch the to- or I, I, I get this a lot couple days before the Oscars, some people will want to cram. They'll say, we only got time to watch a couple movies. I watch this movie with my husband or my wife or my partner. Uh, we uh, can only squeeze in one. Should it be this one or this one? There's a good chance, I'll tell you. Do King Richard. Because King Richard's a movie that if it's on down the road, you're going to watch again yeah. anyway. 